Ba -ba -ba There's an attack on male gamers. Uh, I've, I've seen this video around and I've been asked about reacting to it, so I will. Why, why are we attacking on... Uh, why, why do we attack the male gamers? What are we doing? Why do we do that? Just, I don't know, in my opinion, I think that, I don't know, there's something a little bit childlike about a grown man to be playing games and it is a huge, huge turn off for me and I'm bloody glad my man doesn't play video Shane, games. Shane, I don't have anything meaningful to say about this. I just want to tell her to shut up. I, I agree. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Does she have, all right, does she have her smoke detective low battery going off? Just, I don't know, in my opinion, I think that... Or is that her mic? Like, that was a little whistle right there. Oh, man. Is it just me? Am I just hypersensitive to smoke detector sounds? We can't trust her opinion, obviously, because there's a chance she doesn't put batteries in her smoke detector. You know, that's how that's how we know we can throw her opinion in the garbage. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to hell. And as per That's usual, before flag. we launch in, today's video is sponsored by Manucora. And of course, by my company, Lions Tea Exchange. In addition to my regular wonderful flavors, Lemon I now ginseng. have three new limited edition flavors that are now available on the site for pre-sale. I think they're all really good, but I am a huge fan of the peppermint white chocolate, but you guys seem to be really excited about the bourbon barrel try. No surprises there. I also have these beautiful beautiful wooden gift boxes that are available to for pre for, for the holiday season or just generally if you want them. a beautiful box. Uh, and as you guys know, these are made here in the US of A and the company that I work with plants a tree for every order placed, which honestly I think is pretty cool. I will link all of this in the description box if you would like to support my channel and my tea company. It all means a lot and I love nice. you guys very much. Okay, yeah, back to the video. So now, fancy. I know I'm slightly late to this conversation because it took place a couple weeks ago, but a lot of things were also happening during that time. Like the mystery of who is eating the cats. They're eating the dogs, oh, the people God. that came in. They're eating the cats. And I needed to show you all my breakdancing prowess, okay? Oh. Oh. Look at her go. Now, like I said, a few weeks ago, the conversation, or the debate, if you will, around men playing video games being unattractive was once again resurrected. This has Where, been though? going was on. It like, was it like two people on the internet that nobody cares about? On for quite some time, but periodically, someone, somewhere, for some reason, brings it back up. And every time this happens, it seems that people want to congregate around the idea that men playing video games is bad, and gaming is bad overall. Say the people who probably like crocheting or something. Depressingly, when I started looking for videos on this issue, I actually came across this bizarre- My ache unlocked watching my boyfriend play games. Oh, these people remind me, they, they're just- wow. No, not wow. <laughs> Disgusting! Like, how do you do this? I've seen that. Okay, the opposing side of this, I'm not trying to diminish the fact that this girl is an absolute jerk, okay? I've seen guys do this too, where they're like, oh man, you know how it is having a wife. It's awful having a wife. You know how it is having a girlfriend. Ugh, am I right? Oh, my girlfriend. Ugh. Why do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend if you don't like what they do? Like, why, why do you have one? You made this decision for yourself. You chose to date this man. Like, what is this? A trend on TikTok where women say that their men being happy while playing games gives them the ick. So there's that. Shut up, kill yourself. Just Whoa. launch me to Jupiter at this point. Anyway, this time the conversation started when conservative commentator Liz Wheeler posted a graph of the hobbies women reportedly find the least attractive. Yeah, well, where did you find these people? This totally valid study of very many people that's highly accredited because trust me, bro, yeah? This is 100% true. Men playing video games is peak out attractive, man. Guys with hobbies, am I right? Active. At the top of the list was playing video games. Who's gonna tell her? Who's gonna tell her that they all get it? They just, uh, maybe, maybe that's a deal breaker for them that you gotta go and make an entire, like, scientific study in order to prove this. I feel like, I feel like if you have to go and take all your time, right, to prove this to people, Go, go out and make this study and post it online and act like everyone else is the problem. You might be the problem. Followed by collecting figurines, magic tricks, and online trolling. <laughs> Hobbies, disgusting. Women like men who get home from work and stare at the wall. 
Oh, why is taxidermy lower than playing video games? Okay, I can understand taxidermy. Like, if you don't like dead things, that makes sense. Or gambling, right? Like, those make sense. But why is it gotta be the top three? Those are like the the most harmless. Well, actually, so is bird watching, to be fair. But why is bird watching on there? The fact that bird watching is in like the top 10, man. But apparently we all love a good bird watcher. So that that's a win for the birdophiles. I the birdophiles. But it's still, like, 50 people not liking it. Like, rating it as an unattractive thing. That's what's crazy. I have the absolutely fact even no idea what bird enthusiasts are called. Bird watching, right? Birder. Birder? Well, at least that's memorable. I guess that's well, an improvement okay. on what the train people are called. Hooty tooters? Hooter, hooter tooters? This graph, which obviously Boys, is... Boys, what do we say? Boys who like trains. Can we call you a hooter tooter? Would you accept this as a term of endearment? <laughs> Not based on real evidence, was posted along with Wheeler's commentary, which read, this is 100% true. The Men playing video games yeah. is peak unattractive, beyond red flag, like deal breaker zone. It's weird- Train watchers are not hooter tooters? Okay, my bad. I didn't mean it in a rude way. It sounded fun, okay? A choo chooer? Okay. So many dudes don't get this. You want to know what I don't get? Why it's taken me so long to hear about the wonderful sponsor of today's video, Manukora. I have spent most of my adult life in search of sugar. I'm kind of like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings about it. Understandable. Precious. And the older I get, the more that I realize sugar's not that good for you. But what if I told you there was a sweet alternative that tasted good and was good for you? Well, there is, and it's called Manukora. Manukora honey is pure, single origin Manuka honey found only one. in New Zealand. It's rich, creamy, and supercharged with unique antioxidants I've and heard prebiotics. Of a lot of sugar it actually has but not three times one. more than your good. average honey. So, yeah, take that, normal honey. Manukora honey supports immunity, helps with digestion, Her boosts expression. energy, and is great for assisting Listen, with inflammation. It's also okay, this, this beautiful golden color, Don't ruin and it's my a time. definite game changer if you're anything like me and use honey in tea or on sandwiches. I also like how my little starter pack has this cute little spoon and these honey sticks, which could be completely cool if you're munching on the go. Best of all, Manukora honey has a natural antibacterial compound called MGO that is, is only found honey? in Manuka sure. honey. I don't know what the makes higher the Manuka MGO honey count, different the higher than the any other kind. of nutrients and antioxidants. And Manukora has some of the highest MGO honey on the market. However, and if you when don't I put honey in my tea, your Manukora lid has this little QR it code slaps. that you can scan to trace your honey That's and all I its know, unique okay? information, which I think is pretty cool. So if you too want to embrace a good sweet thing, then click the link in the description or head over to manukora.com slash sydney for $25 off when you buy a starter kit. Mm, honey peanut After butter. a huge yeah, that's amount so of pushback, good. Wheeler followed up with a few additional posts, including another tweet where a woman wrote, women don't dislike video games because they're geeky, we dislike them because they're- Don't you use this we term with me? I'm not associated with you. I hate how people like this talk like they're talking for other people. You're not the norm. You're unaware here that nobody like wants to be associated with somebody like this, man. Antisocial yeah, and who consumption is we? based. Like if a woman said TikTok or online shopping was her hobby. Hobby should include actually doing, making, or learning something. Uh what? They're antisocial and consumption based. Man, what, what a hypocrite. How many tweets do you make a day? I'm not usually this person. I can't, I can't help but be curious, chat. I just, I just want to know how many tweets this lady makes, okay? She's got 27.8k posts. So, 20 minutes ago she makes a post, an hour ago, five hours ago, 18, like, this girl makes a few posts a day at least, if not more. Like, she made like five posts or more on the 20, I, Actually, even more than that. Holy crap. This is all from one day. So I guess it was a, an epic save that she uh, did not put, you know, the consumption base being uh, Twitter as an example. Uh, last time I checked. Oh, did you do the math? It's like 39 tweets a day. Sounds about right. Yeah. Gaming is doing something? 
what is this? What am I even reading here? Doubling down even further, Wheeler also wrote that video games are sedentary, consumptive, fantasy steeped in immorality that have serious negative real world side effects on the men who play them. Okay, so what about you being sedentary, making these long tweets? Are you on your treadmill doing jumping jacks right now and backflips? This tweet was very long, so I'm just going to summarize the generality of it, which was that video games are a net negative on society based on the fact that they reportedly lead to aggressive behavior, desensitization to violence, oh anxiety, God. mood disorders, and so on and so forth. She also asserts that women are attracted to men based on a man's ability to protect, provide, produce, and procreate. Oh hobbies my. that illustrate that ability are attractive to women. Hobbies that do not are not. Not to be a jerk, at least not intentionally, but Oh, isn't I'm intentionally being a jerk. Reading sedentary? And isn't buying random female crap for your house consumptive? Do you want to go and have a conversation with the immoral smut reading ladies over on Book Talk? Would you like to have a word? Please I really no. <laughs> don't send me there. I don't mean to be so sarcastic about all of this, it just really irritates me. Of course- It doesn't irritate me at all, I guess I just laugh, because it's like usually people who make long tweets like this and then double and triple down, you know? Like, they know they're wrong. Of course, the icing on the cake here is the entire live stream that Wheeler decided to make about this topic, oh. addressing <laughs> the blowback that she- Oh man, you could tell she uh, was not- she was very resolute in her ideas. <laughs> You could tell she really believed in herself and did not care what the opposition said by the fact that she said what she said, doubled down, tripled down, and then had a live stream to talk about it later. Received and saying that lots oh, of people were unkind to her about it and she didn't like that, which honestly, like, yeah, fair enough. This video is really long and she burned through a lot of points very quickly and we don't have time to unpack them, but I overall felt really irritated watching Wheeler's live stream. And Listen, I will say, okay, because I like to play devil's advocate, there is a such thing as saying an opinion that's not really that you know, not really that bad, but like, you know, the majority of whoever crazy minority is speaking loudly on Twitter that has a different opinion comes to dogpile you, that exists. It also happens when, when people like are not able to listen that they're clearly wrong. <laughs> Takeaway was and, just and generally, that is the, tell me this you've is, never this played is video games case. without telling me you've never played video games. She again brought up that it makes people more desensitized and prone to violence because apparently we're resurrecting 90s talking points. I don't know. I just, I thought we were over this. Look, I don't know this personally. I mean, we are over this. She's not, to clarify. And so I don't want anyone to perceive this as me attacking her because she seems like a nice lady, but I do find her opinion and this- I don't think she seems like a nice lady. However, I don't advocate for anybody harassing anybody just because I don't agree with their takes. Extended opinion, really frustrating. I think there's a trend on the right side of politics where some conservatives in particular like to fully reject and stomp on really important cultural and entertainment based mediums. And even if the intention behind that is a noble one, I still think it comes across as really controlling and fun policing. I don't think that she's trying to do a good thing here. I actually think it's from insecurity, if I were to guess. It's probably parasocial, but this is 100% smells of insecurity. Listen, even people with daddy issues don't want to be parented this hard. I mean, they do want something hard, but it, it's not parenting. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! All of this to say, in the long run, I don't think it's very helpful. And I'm sure some of you will disagree with that, and that's okay. Feel free to scream at me in the comments. No! <laughs> No! Anyway, about a week later, another video popped up where a woman called Bex from the radio show 102 Philly was similarly articulating why she doesn't like men playing video games. She said that it was lazy and generally unproductive. But the whole gaming thing... <sighs> What's the problem? Jacqueline has this big problem too. It, 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 because it's just lazy it feels un like unless you're getting paid and there's a line right like it's cool if you want to do it every so often but to me i'm like go educate like go do something productive but what is the problem why does every fun having thing that you do have to be productive like that's the thing that bothers me uh and i think this kind of shows like when they say like this is lazy and unproductive uh i think what actually she is meaning all right, is that 
And I'm not saying she's not being a jerk, okay? She's being a jerk. What this really tells me is she can't figure it out. She can't put herself in this guy's shoes and figure out why this is enjoyable. Older people, like older generations, won't understand it either, guys and girls, because they, they can't, they can't put themselves in your shoes because they didn't have these things when they were growing up. And so this is their default they go to when they don't get it. It like, gives them more you control. Know, Jacqueline has a big problem with it too. Whenever she hears the PlayStation start up, like oh, I gotta hear it go. huffing and puffing. Yeah. But if we were to, if I were to just have TV on, you'd be on TikTok as it is, because not paying it's, attention. It's not that, so why does it bother you? Because it, because it's not the distraction of me being on TikTok and us watching TV. It's what you could be doing with that time. There it is, and that's what I knew it. It's I knew it. You, you want it. You women want to task us no, so no, no, bad no, 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 no. that you're so pissed no, no, that we're taking no, time no. from doing something. No. Wait a minute, you're enjoying things. You have time to do this video see, game. Here's the thing. Uh, this here's is all. a toxic trait in anybody. I I don't know if it's more prevalent in women. It might be okay. I just don't want to sound like you know. If you see anyone, okay, whether it's 99% female and 1% male or whatever, right? If you see anyone that's insecure that you're enjoying yourself and you have your own hobbies or own things that bring you joy outside of a relationship, it's a huge red flag, man. The things but you could be doing. here's the thing. You're enjoying it, but you could also be planning something nice. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. You could be planning something nice for us. She doesn't like that you are enjoying something completely without her that like if she fell off a cliff tomorrow you would still enjoy this you need to have your own value if you are trying to get someone to get rid of all of theirs you know to make you feel better about yourself for us you know like, own insecurity. <laughs> like i mentioned this is not the first time that this type of criticism has come up a couple years ago three more women got a lot of heat online for making fun of men who game with one of the women even suggesting there's a correlation between gaming and the being bad in the bedroom or having oh my god you cannot be serious can you imagine? Okay, I love to i love to think about how this would be if it was on the other side right because stereotypes are common it's, it's more normalized that a girl would say this. Can you imagine a guy being like, man, girls are worse in the bedroom. Whenever I've dated girls that get on the TikTok cap, like, can you imagine? I'd be like, whoa. Having small male genitalia. What the hell? What happens? Every hour they play a video game, their pee pee just shrinks. Oh no. I'll be honest with you. Not if I think of the top 10, Best dicks I've ever had. They didn't play. Video Ew! Why are you putting a list on peepees, my dude? Why? Why do you have a catalog of, of these, of pool noodles? What in the world? Video games. So I'm convinced video games are for mediocre. Dicks. Well, I grew up as a gamer, so it was okay know. with it. That was that was. I just, quite, I just quite right with me. But I, I got excited too. I don't know too. what grown man is spending that much time playing video There's games. There's a lot of really... grown men spending a lot of time. And I don't think bullshit. that there. The, a lot. I don't. I don't think that you could be a great partner or a great lover no, as a grown I, man spending time playing. I don't think you could be a great partner or a great lover if you can't have your own value system outside of somebody needing to find value with you and everything that they do and not have their own hobbies that bring them joy outside of you you don't need this man to like be on a ventilator for you and not be able to survive or find any joy in things except for when he's with you that's not romantic that's codependency it's not attractive okay, it's, it's like called independence and you don't like it uh. because you're not independent this is such a weird statement do you always judge the appropriateness of a hobby based on man pickles and their performance is this a Bro, she also tier lists them apparently she's like on my list from one to ten legitimate metric why are people like this i mean it put me in the cannon and launch me to jupiter Wee. so i have a very vested interest in this topic both as a woman and as a person who plays video games so i do feel that it is is pretty important to come to the defense of male gamers and I guess just really any gamer in general. Because if the criticisms that I've so far highlighted in this video are anything to go by, I think people's perceptions of this industry and those who enjoy games are completely off base. And I think it's- So th this is not every girl. This might be more prevalent of a bad opinion from girls to guys, right? It's a stereotype more so. Like, if you're a girl in a video game, 
and you use your mic and you're on a team of guys, uh, guys will call you a pick me. That's that's going to happen to you more often. People will tell you to make a sandwich. But like if a guy has video games as a hobby and is dating a girl that doesn't understand video games, it's probably more common that she gets upset about video games like this, right? Like there there is meanness stereotypes. And this one definitely is more so women from what I've seen. It's really wild to say that gaming is not a hobby, and if it is, it's one that's overall unattractive to women. Because I would argue, in many, many cases, that is not true. I mean, first and foremost, the gaming industry as a whole has changed dramatically over the last few decades, and video games have accelerated in scale and quality during that time too. Yeah. Rather than games appealing to a small portion of people, now anyone anywhere can play them, which is why the industry has become so enormous. There are so many different stories being told, so many different ideas being explored, and let's remember, importantly, that the amount of women playing games has also grown more and more and is right right the amount of people in general has grown because access to games is easier and there's so many different types of games that more games appeal to women now than ever before too continuing to do so and no animal crossing and the sims don't count as gaming please stop this Point sure they do shut up I'll play all of them. I don't I don't want this whole like, oh, this isn't game enough. Point being, video games themselves and the gamers who play them come in all forms, and I don't think it's fair to tar everyone with the same brush. With that said, I do understand why some people, some being the operative word, find gaming to be an unattractive hobby, and I think there's a number of reasons for that. Not okay, so she did say that like she doesn't uh agree with using gamer as like a, a brush that you have to define perfectly so number one when I most think of us millennials the same were page. growing up which is what our friend liz wheeler is we were only really then starting to see sort of a shift in the way that people viewed men and video games until this point i think it's fair to say that gamers were largely associated with the basement dwelling dorks who played yep. world of warcraft from dawn until dusk and whether that view is true or not, whether it's fair or not, that's what was portrayed predominantly in media, entertainment, and by all the kids, all those boys that we went to high school with. I can Yeah, and the reason that is is that WoW was so mainstream compared to other games at that time that it was the one that most people were aware of above every, everything else. It was the first thing that kind of peaked it to the normal audience outside of, like, niches, I think. Actually testify to this. Oh, she's being sarcastic. I might not have picked up on that. Then that's my bad. I was going to say, she doesn't seem like the type to be like that. So I think I might have missed the sarcasm. Whoopsie. Because I fully remember my older brother sitting in the office all day playing WoW and sometimes painting Warhammer. I think he still paints Warhammer. To be completely fair to my brother, because, you know, he will probably watch this video, uh, he is in fact the reason why I like gaming at all. And I also remember sitting next to him, watching him play Spyro, because little sister. Now that I'm thinking about it, I also Spyro remember- Spyro was also like my very early childhood game I saw. I remember his LAN parties with his nerd friends, so. Really, really love aging myself there. Anyway, <laughs> this type of visual and this messaging has definitely been ingrained in a lot of us because it's also what we were exposed to in pop culture. And it's probably why a bunch of elder millennials and people who are older than elder millennials, especially view gamers through this lens. Actually, hilariously, when I was researching for this video, I found out that the attractiveness of male gamers and how much they game is still being studied because I guess this is a stereotype that never dies. This oh my god. Who cares? Like, why are we spending money on this? I feel like this is a waste of time. This is just me, okay? It's like, who who cares? Second reason, and I think this is more applicable across the board, is it is unattractive to come home to your man sitting on his butt all day playing video games. On the weekends- Yeah, but that's with anything, by the way. If you come home and somebody does not take care of themselves. I don't, I don't think this is just video games. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. The less you take care of yourself, the less attractive people will perceive you to be, you know? Gaming. All day. Gaming. Every single weekend. Gaming. Can't pull himself away for long enough to spend time with you or to be a father or a husband or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but that's implicating that he does not have self-control or self-care. He's not passionate about something. He's controlled by something. So that's, that's, you know, 
bad at any person you look at. That's not going to be an attractive quality. Ever. When it becomes an addiction that consumes you, yes, that is a problem and that is unattractive. And this is the primary criticism that I find online when it comes to men and video games. When my husband and I first got married, he was addicted to video games. So if your spouse is addicted to video games or sports or anything, listen to this. But the thing is, if your man or a man doesn't have a gaming addiction, then what precisely is unattractive about this interest? At I really think it comes down to the fact that they're seeing somebody like I don't, okay, this might be a hot take. Uh, there's a lot of uh, media, especially, that portrays, like, men being unable to control, like, their love for you or whatever. Like, mainly in romance movies and stuff. And it's obviously not realism, but it's like, this is portrayed a lot with, like, women and, and you know, what romance is. It's like a, a man's inability to, to you know, like, he's so in love with you and nobody else and you're perfect and all this other. And I think it's actually unhealthy when you apply it to real life, obviously. And this is why it's because like, it, it you know, they're looking for uh, this almost like codependence, right? This is just my opinion, by the way, as a girl, what I've seen. Okay, so I don't represent everyone, uh, but a lot of them represent like obsession. And I think that might be where this comes from. Just in my experience, the women that I have come into contact with or that I'm friends with or that are in my family and whatever, don't really view a man's interest in video games as a good or bad thing. What's most important is how he balances his gaming with his life and its many obligations. For example, back in 2020, a TikToker called Alyssa Nguyen actually had to come out and clarify that her gamer husband did indeed take care of her and her kids. Yeah, that's this is sad, right? Like she's showing off all the cool food she's giving her husband. And this is just meant to be a romantic cute thing. And then people are like, oh my gosh, your your husband, he must not take care of you. He must be lazy. It's like, no, I'm never going to feel bad for somebody who talks crap about their significant other on on media. It's like, if you don't like them, don't date them. She began uploading compilations so of her good. bringing him his nightly dinners. She wrote, so he does good. all his chores, daddy duties, and husband duties before getting on. One person even asked Nguyen if she was happy with the amount of time her husband gamed. Nguyen responded, it He's only playing a couple hours per night after he gets home from a long shift, bro. Le the parasocialism, this is what I mean. They like project their own like insecurities onto someone else. Doesn't bother me at all. He plays a couple hours a night Yeesh. after he gets home from a long shift. And honestly, I think this comment crystallizes a broader point. A lot of people, not only men, use video games as a way to alleviate anxiety, to decompress, to de-stress after a long day or a long week or whatever the case may be. And I can actually personally relate to this, and I've actually said this. I, I agree with her, but at the same time, I don't even think it's this deep. It's a hobby. It's something to have fun with. Other videos where I find it's cool if they do, but they don't need to. more enjoyable after a particularly stressful day than jumping into whatever game I'm playing and just like hacking monsters to death because it's cathartic and it stops me from committing murder. That is yeah, a see, joke. it's anti-violence because I took all my mayhem out in the fictional video game. So now I can be man, well behaved. I am making a joke. <laughs> Jokes aside, in addition to being cathartic, it is a good form of escapism. I watched one particular TikTok where a guy was describing escapism in video games as a bad thing, using it as an indicator of depression or a person who hates their life. And that very well might be the case sometimes. This just reiterates- People use escapism to avoid responsibilities in many hobbies. This could be like going out with friends. This could be watching TV shows. Like, this could be going out for drinks. This could be video games. It's like escapism can be bad if you don't do anything in your life, like to help you or anybody, anything else you're responsible for, of course, like. Right, that men yearn for the minds. But again, why do people frown on this type of escapism, but not when it comes in the form of books or films or television shows? I genuinely feel like there's such an unfair double standard when it comes to gaming that isn't equally applied to other entertainment mediums. Yeah, this is my guess, by the way. Books are always perceived in the most part, at least in older media, as something you do that is productive. Whereas video games never really had that as the forefront. The most popular game 
uh, you know, at, at least mainstream as well. And that was just used for fun. Like there are educational games, but they were later. The first reason, the, the first games that came into popularity that people heard about were fun. Yeah, I'm gonna need you all to stop that. In my opinion, the bottom line here is that gaming is, in fact, a legitimate hobby. And I will argue Obviously. to like, I am blue in the face with whoever I need to argue with, that many of us ladies would much rather a guy who games in moderation than one who is down at the bar or at the club every single weekend getting drunk. If you Yes, because drinking can be more destructive. Stuff like that, it's not good for your body. If you're gaming, it's not like if you game a little too long, like you you suddenly like have these direct repercussions within a few hours. Yeah, it's more harmful. It's more destructive right off the like get go. Are a man and you enjoy video games. That's the that same with games though. No, it is not. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain it to you. You can you can just figure it out. Active <laughs> and frankly, it can actually be a really nice opportunity for. Obviously, both have the uh potential for abuse or addiction, but they are not the same. Bonding with your spouse or girlfriend. And I say this as someone who freaking loves couch co-ops. Like, I recently played the Untitled Goose game and it was unironically a lot of fun. I have <laughs> to stay away Goose from game the w. though because I, uh, I just let it- Alcoholic Gamer Ultimate W? Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time gaming though. That's- that's a bad combination. You're not- you're not gonna be good at the games then. Everyone down. <laughs> People who make the claim that gaming is antisocial and will turn men into murder factories genuinely don't seem to understand the nature of gaming and how community-based and collaborative it often is these days. A lot of modern games have a ton of multiplayer features and it allows you to do like, you know, the teamwork. In a time where people are super disconnected, the gaming world is actually pretty great at helping- Oh yeah, this is another point, right? I guess the biggest point you could say is that while drinking is not productive and gaming could be not productive, gaming can have positive effects and drinking really doesn't. You know, there's that weird argument from somewhere that if you drink like one little glass of like red wine or something, it could be good for you. But we all know that's not what we're talking about here. There are games out there that like can teach things or, or you know, have you socialize with people. These are positive impacts. There really isn't that same thing for drinking people make friends and create communities. I'll say as well that there are apparently a bunch of other measurable benefits to playing games, like improvements to cognitive functioning, problem solving, impulse control, and so on and so forth, but I don't wanna get into it, so uh, I don't know, I guess I'll link some of these in the description and you can read them in your own time. There are definitely way more things to add about this specific topic, but the one that I wanna leave you with, the last thought that I have here, is that I definitely think that there is an online trend where people can can't stand to see men doing things that make them happy. Men have yeah. video games and sports. I would definitely say, as far as like toxic girl stereotypes go, that this is more prevalent because they're insecure in themselves and they're putting it on the guy. What do women have? A hundred percent. I actually see this a lot on Twitter, but with relation to women, where people will post a video of women just doing something fun and silly and goofy and enjoying themselves. I think we put them in insecurity rehab and give them Animal Crossing. I feel like at least we could convert some of them. And then this onslaught of comments and responses are mad that the women are having fun. I yeah, see go meet Tom Nook, all right? that a lot here with this issue, and I absolutely hate it when people do it to both of the sexes. Just shh, let people enjoy things. Personally, I'm really glad that gaming has become such a positive outlet for so many people. And as far as unattractive interests go, I think it's worth remembering that when it comes to hobbies and relationships, any hobby can become an obstacle, much in the same way that it can also be an asset. If you enjoy something- If or you are addicted to something and you can't control yourself, it's unattractive. Or have a hobby or Mic have drop. a special interest that gets in between you and somebody else, or it is an all-consuming thing that pushes everybody out of your life, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a problem. But if you can take an interest or a hobby or a thing that you love and share it with somebody else in an engaging way, or in a way for yourself that passes time but doesn't fill it, I think that's really positive and honestly I think that's really all any of us actually want. In the end, if gaming is a thing that you can share with your wife or girlfriend, a thing that you can use to- yeah, You know what, okay, 
I, it's like therapy when I watch TikToks and stuff of like couples gaming, like, you know, like they have one, one side that's theirs and the other side that's hers. And it's like a complete line between because her side's like super pastel and his is like dark blue. It's just wholesome. Or even something that has helped you build a really strong community with friendships and positive experiences. No woman in their right mind would consider that a problem. And if right. they do, I think that says much more about that woman than the gamer 100%. himself. 100%. Now, on that note, and before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder, check out Manukora using the link in the description. I unironically love this honey, so I'm really excited about this sponsorship, and I hope you guys love it as well if you decide to give it a crack. Now, I open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? Is gaming, in fact, unattractive? Are you one of these ladies who just thinks- yeah. I think that this is indicative that they are a red flag. I think if I hear a girl say this, it's like, smells like an insecure person that wants somebody to be codependent on them. That That's not a healthy relationship, what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not about this. This is like, terrible. You might want to, you might want to, like, if a girl says this, I'm like, you need to figure out a sense of self because I can't give you that. Cause that's what they're looking for, okay? Like I know that's like a deep thing, okay? But like they're looking to find a sense of self-worth inside of someone else valuing them because they don't value themselves and they're insecure. Well, anyway. Are you a guy who thinks it's unattractive and terrible? Are you somebody who really likes gaming and likes to share that with your loved ones? Are you somebody who maybe is on the addiction side of things and you can see how bad and damaging all of this can be? Do you think that the commentary around gaming is fair? Is it unfair? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you have made it this far in the video, congratulations. I always like having you along for the full ride. If you are new here and you would like to see more of me and more of this kind of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel as yeah, well this as was leaving a very this video, good video a like and a comment because I do read the majority of them. I really like hearing your feedback and you guys make me laugh. Of course, I think if she's you have right, any by the video way. suggestions or video, video ideas, feel free to let me know because I do have a running list of those. And as always, I will see you wonderful pretty people in the next video. I don't, okay, so she she's not saying to do this. I liked this, this was great, by the way. Give her a follow, obviously. Subscribe, her name is Sydney Watson. Yeah, it's, I think it really just comes down to not oversimplifying people to stereotypes. If you're projecting a scenario that happened with somebody who was addicted to something that does not reflect everyone else. And if you oversimplify people down to like one experience you had with like somebody who played video games being addicted to them, or like you have your own insecurity you're projecting onto someone else. Like those are two things that are a you issue. Cause some, nobody should have to give up their hobbies for you. It's not really the game you have a problem. It's the fact that they don't have any self-control.